Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Cynthia Smith, and this is the Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast, where I invite you to come for the chat and stay for the healing. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> the purpose of this broadcast is to talk about subjects, issues, things that we as humans might be going through, and then offer a hypnotic or meditative or psychic or spiritual healing for the aforementioned topic. We talk about stuff and then I heal stuff. But that is my intention. And why on a global scale? Just to bring some light, some love, some peace, some joy to the world. Because if you're hurting, know that there is always some sunlight if you look up. Um, today's subject is on death and dying. So I've had several patients, clients, friends, relatives, um, that have been had to address the subject in one form or another. And the healing meditation we're going to do is going to be for whether you are the person who is dying, person who is about to make your physical transformation. If you are about to leave your body, if you have a terminal diagnosis, for example, or if you want to be prepared in case the unthinkable happens. And it's also healing for those of us that are left behind when someone we love has passed. Um, because, you know, they're not suffering anymore, at least in a physical form. Um, but we sure get to grieve and how to manage that for either scenario. And this is my truth, um, ascribe to it what you will. If it makes sense in your, your universe, adopt it. If it doesn't disregard, but my truth around these things is that the more conscious you are, as a spirit, having a human experience, the more conscious decisions you can make and the more consciousness you attract into your life. With that being said, if you plan, if you will, for your next step, your reincarnation, should you decide to inhabit a body after you leave your current one, what are you gonna do differently? Who are you going to incarnate with? Who's gonna be in your pod or your tribe? My truth is that you can set that up ahead of schedule. Um, I've asked the universe, I've set my intention that when I do leave my body, I would like to realign with my daughter, Shanti. Um, I feel like we have some pretty cool karma in this lifetime, and I wouldn't mind having another go, you know, either as mother, daughter, daughter, mother, two brothers, coworkers. The choices are endless. Um, but in my next lifetime, of my pod, my family, my immediate family. She's the one I would definitely want to re-up with. Um, if you are in the place of looking at your own mortality um, and do you have the consciousness to make these decisions or look at this work, this is a great meditation for you. Kind of think of it as putting your psychic house in order. Is there stuff that you want to get 
done, get healed. Um, there's a common phrase, your bucket list. Are there things that you want to do, accomplish, um, milestones, mile markers to achieve before you make your transition, before you connect to source? Let's get them done. Let's write them down. Let's make it a priority. Um, is there healings to be had? Is there karma to be cleansed? You know, what do you need to do to get your psychic house in order? Um, if you have been at a place where you thought perhaps um, exiting your body to end your suffering, um, and if you do have those ideations, there are groups, people that are there to help, there are helplines. Um, I will put them in the show notes. But as I've shared with clients who have told me that they've had these considerations, I gently and lovingly remind them or let them know that um, if you are trying to leave your body to escape some pain or escape some trauma or escape some karma that is weighing you down in this lifetime, my truth on the subject is it'll be waiting for you in your next incarnation. So choose wisely. Wouldn't it be easier to stay in your body and work through whatever your your traumas are, whatever your pain is, um, and do it in a place where you can be more conscious, more loving, and receive the healing that you deserve if you if you ask. Um, and if I've told you once, I've told you at least eight times on this podcast, if someone you love has transpired, I believe we even started this podcast um, talking about one of Kaylin's friends that left suddenly and how I helped her by learning spirit to spirit communication. If you are the one grieving and someone you love is about to expire or has passed, fear not. The spirit is eternal. The bod has an expiration date, but you can reconcile, you can have chats, you can communicate with the spirit even after they left the body. Now, if they're still in a body, to whatever degree that they're conscious or focused or able, again, spirit to spirit communication, you can still have connection with that individual, even if they can't speak as maybe they once did. And you can help your loved one get their spiritual house in order. Do they have any karma to wrap up? Do they have any pain yet to heal? And what's really fabulous about spiritual healing, psychic healing, healing on the ethereal plane, is there's no time, no space in spirit. And the amount of time it takes you to have a thought, you are moving that energy. So if you have a thought that you need a healing in your stomach, the moment you say, I need a healing in my stomach, I accept a healing in my stomach, you can have a healing in your stomach. So there's an urgency, but there's not an urgency because you can get a lot of stuff done with a little intention and a smattering of faith so whether you are in the body and the body is about to expire 
and you're about to be on the spiritual plane exclusively for a time. This is an opportunity to look at what we call death, death pictures. And by we, I mean <clears throat> those in my community that went to psychic school with. And if you want to know where to go to psychic school, other than listening to this podcast, um, I can put that information in the show notes as well. And death pictures are the idea of what happens when we look at the concept of death. For example, if you were raised in a fire and brimstone kind of church upbringing, and you're just sure you're going to hell because you're a sinner, that is one death picture that might inspire a level of fear um, and dread, and maybe even a little, oh, screw it. You know, I'm just going to go to hell anyway. Um, that's not my truth, but that is a truth, um, a belief that some people ascribe to. So that's a death picture. You also might think that once you leave your body, you're going to hang out on the spirit plane for a while until you reincarnate. That's a death picture. You might think that there's nothing once the and see theater term, um, but there's nothing. And you can be ambivalent to the concept of death. Also a death picture. So death picture is your thoughts, your ideas around the concept of death and dying and how you feel about it, how you respond to that idea. Um, and yes, it can be case by case specific. If it's somebody you know, somebody that you're close to, you might have a different or more acute death picture around death and dying than someone you read about on the news or half a world away. Um, either way, whether it's yourself that's leaving a body or if it's someone you know that has left a body or is about to leave their body, you can help them connect to the Supreme Being or connect to God. Um, my friend Polly used to call it hailing them a cab. So, um, and if this is triggering for you, great. That means stick around. We're going to heal some of this. Um, on the original 9-11, and you guys probably heard this on my 9-11 Remembrance um, podcast episode. Even to this day, it's one of my remembrances of a of a safe place, you know, in a, in a, a hypnosis technique is we ask you to imagine a safe place where you're perfectly safe, per, perfectly supported. And one of my safe places was the evening of 9-11 and I was in psychic school and I was with 12 or 15 other classmates and the um, two directors of the Institute. And we spent that evening looking at death pictures, looking at this impact. But also we as a community hooked all of those individuals up to the Supreme Being. You know, when I talked about ghosts and things like this, there's a lot of stuck beings. One of the kindest things you can do for yourself or someone else that's transpiring, you know, leaving their body is to hook their spirit up to the Supreme Being. Hail them a cab so they aren't stuck. So they aren't stuck here on the earth plane, wandering around, being the subject of one of those god-awful paranormal shows. Um, <laughs> and the reason I say god-awful is because they make all the stuck beings that they encounter out to be malevolent or scary. They're like, look at this grandma and she's stuck. You know, doesn't know which button on the elevator to push. Anywho, that's my <laughs> that's my rabbit hole on that 
But anywho, so um, hooking someone up to the supreme being, connecting them to source, the God of their heart, and you don't even have to know what it is. You're just seeing them as a spirit going up to their next step, ascending um, to their reality of spirit their, or the God of their heart, the supreme being, the universe, source, energy, pure love, pure light, God, whatever it is. It's a very loving thing to say, thank you for sharing some time with me while you're in a bod. I learned some stuff, had some fun. Um, and bon voyage, happy trails, best of luck. Maybe I'll see you again. And it can genuinely be a celebration of life, a celebration of their life, a celebration of their life travels. Or if you're the person transpiring, a celebration of your travels, a celebration of what you've accomplished. And it's also an opportunity for you to set your intentions of like, okay, what do I want to still work on in my next lifetime? How do I want to um, manifest? What's it going to look at? How much more conscious will I choose to be than I was in this lifetime? What do I choose to experience? Because on some level or another, A, we chose our parents, which means we chose our grandparents. We chose our siblings. Would we make those choices again? The more conscious we are, the more conscious decisions we make, even when we're about to leave our body. So with that being said, and please, I, um, if this is triggering for you, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry, but I'm glad you're listening and stick around because we're going to heal this. We talk about stuff and then we heal stuff. Um, if this is of comfort, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, you can comment if there's a subject or something that you would like me to address in a future podcast, or if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, hello at drcynthiasmith.com. And, um, yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to take a short break for sponsors. And then we'll be right back and get started. Welcome back. All right, everyone. This is time for you to find yourself in a nice comfy seat. Have a glass of tea or a glass of water. Kick off your shoes. Grab a blankie. And really just let your body be as comfortable as you can for the next 20 or 30 minutes and turn your phones off. Obviously we're not driving and this is obviously not one to listen to in the car probably. And just nestle in. And as you take your first deep breath and let it go, Say hello to your own physical body. Hello. Hello, physical body. Thank you for allowing me to have this human experience. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for sticking it out. Allowing me to sometimes be unconscious at the wheel so to speak, but just acknowledge your physical body. Even the Bible says we are wonderfully made and that is an understatement. The human form is magnificent. Even with hiccups or as I call mine, uh, coffee ring on my blueprint. I have a 
small disability in my hand, but it's okay. I'm grateful. So take a deep, deep breath. Just acknowledge your physical body. Thank it. Appreciate its years of service. And engage your physical body. Say hello. And we have five different versions of our body that are in play. The first, of course, is our physical body. Then there's our spiritual body, our mental body, our emotional body, and our astral body. Our astral body is that part of us that goes up and out and cruises around the astral, the heaven plane, while we're asleep. Sometimes when we're taking a nap. Sometimes when we're under anesthesia. So if we think about our astral body, we already have many, many years of test driving what it's like to be up and out of our physical body and coming back safely. So say hello to all five of your bodies. And like you are stacking um, paper dolls, make sure all of your bodies are integrated into your physical home and be in kindergarten space. You can't mess this up. Be a point of light in the center of your head. Be grounded. Tube of light, a grounding cord that connects the base of your spine to the center of the earth. And be in your bubble. Bubble is your aura, your energy field. It's your personal space. It's also a safety buffer. And your aura has, five, has excuse me, seven layers, just like your seven chakras. The innermost layer corresponds to your first chakra, and the outermost layer corresponds to your seventh chakra, or your connection to source, your connection to the God of your heart. Imagine, if you will, you're in the center of your head, you're grounded in your bubble, and you can see all seven of your chakras. The first is your root chakra. Second is your relationship space. Third is your drive, your will. Fourth is your heart chakra. Fifth is your communication space. Sixth is the center of your head, your intuitive space. That's where we are right now. Your seventh is your connection to the God of your heart. Take a moment and allow each of these chakras, each of these energy centers in your body, in your spiritual body, mental body, astral body, emotional body, See each one as a sphere and see each chakra spin. They spin gyroscopically. That means in every plane, X, Y, N, Z, front and back, side to side, and crisscross. And it's not haphazard, it's rhythmic. It's intentional. And see each of your chakras spin 
at a rate and speed that feels comfortable in your physical body. And have each of your chakras spinning in sync with each other. They're all spinning in the same speed. Chakras are all the same size. And as they spin, they discharge any energy that you're ready to let go of. Just on their own. And it miraculously and effortlessly travels down your grounding cord to the center of the earth. And any energies that you let go of are recycled into neutral. And as each one of those chakras is spinning, allow it to give a healing to its corresponding layer of your aura bubble. If you were to look at a transection of your aura, or if you were to cut it in half like a gumball or a jawbreaker, you would see the seven layers. And imagine that you can put electric blue light in between each of the layers. And this electric blue light gives a cleansing, gives a healing to each layer of your aura. And by attending to your chakras and the layers of your aura, your energy tools, your psychic tools, that allows your physical body to feel safe, to feel comfortable, to feel rested, at ease. This is a great tool for any time. You just need a coffee break or a respite. Just ground, spin your chakras, put some electric blue through the layers of your aura. And if you are in a body that is failing, if you have a terminal diagnosis, Imagine that you are in the center of your head, in your bubble, grounded. You have your chakras spinning. You've got electric blue between each layer of your aura. And create a reading screen on the outside of your bubble. A psychic whiteboard, if you will. And on this psychic whiteboard, you're going to make a couple of lists. The first list is all the things, all the people, all the events, all the experiences that you're grateful for. Who showed up in your life and was just an angel? Maybe only saw him for a moment but it resonated for you. Who showed up for a lifetime? What experience have you had? What child's laugh can you still hear in your ears? What beautiful sunset can you still see when you close your eyes? Make a list of all the things that you are grateful for. How long you got to stay in this body. Who you got to interact with. Maybe for a long time, maybe for a relatively short time. Savor the time you have, the time that you have had. 
and all the experiences, all the people that you are grateful for. Because when you think about those items, those people, those times, those experiences, those situations that took you from where you were to where you are, and you're grateful, you can see the blessing in that experience or that interaction. That sends a, a vibrational message to the universe. And you'll have more things to be grateful for. Perhaps a pain-free passing. Perhaps a spontaneous healing, and you get to stick around for a while longer. Perhaps a wish, a hope, a dream that you had intended finally comes true. But start by saying thank you to that which you have. Our lives typically are so rich with experiences if we can look at them for the blessing that they are. Even the tough times, even the hardships, even the whoopsies. And you can edit this psychic whiteboard as much as you like. It's free. You can do it as often as you want. Add and subtract. And then another column on that whiteboard, make a list of anything or things that you have yet to accomplish. Did you want to finish that book or copyright that song? Did you want to apologize to a friend for being a jerk? Whatever it is that you still want to do while you're still in a body in this lifetime, write it down. Anything you want. And you don't have to justify this list to anyone. If you want to be a rockette and dance in the Christmas production in Rockefeller Center and you're 102, who cares? Maybe you'll just get to do it. Won't know it if you don't try. So put those things down that you intend to do, want to do, still need to do, and put them on your psychic whiteboard. And then in the third column, consider your next step. What's going to happen after you leave your body? If you're in the something will happen, then you'll have more to write than if you're in the nothing happens after you die constituency. Then you can leave that column blank. But if you believe that something, that we have a next step, this is an opportunity for you to Consider what it's going to be like. What would you like to do? How would you like your passing to go? My idea, one of my ideas, is to go out on a vibration of absolute bliss. What is absolute bliss? Well, it's a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For example, um, seeing a beautiful sunset or reading a beautiful poem 
or holding hands with my beloved, or maybe listening to the giggles of my grandchild or great grandchild or, you know, home movies of my own child. Anything that I find blissful. My intention is to go out on a vibration of absolute bliss. So it would be like exit laughing if we did that in uh, theater terms. And um, because wouldn't that be a lovely energy to travel into the next realm on? And that's just mine. You could do anything. You can set your intention. And as I said earlier, I set my intention that in my next incarnation, I would like my daughter, Shanti, to be along for the ride. If that is also her intention. So what do you want to do? Do you want to come back and cure cancer? Create world peace? Teach us all how to teleport? So in the third column, write your intentions. And again, you don't have to explain or justify any of your ideas. Just consider making them positive, joyful, engaging, maybe even fun. So as you sit in the center of your head, filling out your whiteboard, your to-do list, your gratitude list, your next step list, as a spirit who is eternal in a life form that has an expiration date. You can be joyous about the time that you've been here. You can be joyous about the experiences you've had. And you can elect to consciously choose what you're going to do next. What you intend to leave for your family, your friends, who might mourn you upon your passing. And you can do it with love. You can do it with light. You can even do it with amusement. My poor kid, I've asked her when I leave to turn me into diamonds and wear me. You know, and then the rest of my ashes, I've invited her to take me to any place that we visited together that we had fond memories or any place that she thinks I'd like to be, you know. Yes. spread a little of my ashes there. That'd be nice. So those are the kind ways that we can look at our own death, our own passing, our own mortality. Did you know that even the French call an orgasm, la petite mort, the little death. So maybe death doesn't have to be so scary. Now, if you are still in a body and you're grieving someone who has left theirs or is about to leave theirs, you could intend, you can help that individual with their next step. So be in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. And if your person is still in a body, you can talk to them about things that they are grateful for. 
you can do a little spirit to spirit communication and just list the happy memories, the, the accomplishments, the people they met, places they get saw, uh, et cetera. And share with them. those things, those issues, those situations, those experiences that they are grateful for, or maybe the two of you are grateful for, the family is grateful for. Again, when you hold a vibration of gratitude, the universe provides more things for you to be grateful for. And then the same rules apply. Ask your person what they have yet to do. Do they have someone they need to forgive or someone they need to ask forgiveness of? Do they have a wish list of experiences they want to? do and before that they before they leave their body help them hold their hand let them know that there's no subject as long as it's positive that you won't be there you know to try and help them with or validate they want to be a rocket and the Christmas show, Rockefeller Center, say yes, why not? And then thirdly, if your friend or family member is about to leave their body, you have an opportunity to ask them, what about their next step? Where do they think they're going to go next? What would they like to do in their next lifetime? What have they yet to heal or what would they like to heal or provide healing for others? It's a kind and loving meditation you can do with them. And lastly, if you are still in a body and your beloved has left their body, be in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble, spinning your chakras and having that electric blue light in between all the layers of your aura bubble. And imagine out in front of you, you have a theater stage. and put a spotlight on that stage. And ask your friend or beloved to step into the spotlight. They may look like what they did on the physical plane. They might look like an orb, a ball of light. They might look like a throw pillow. Just say hello to whoever they were in this lifetime by whatever name they went by. And send them hellos. A hello is a psychic message from your crown to their crown, from your crown to them. Because at the end of the day, we all just want to be seen. We want to be seen. We want to be validated. We want to be loved, acknowledged. We want to matter. And just because we've left our bodies doesn't mean that we want those things any less. And just because someone has left their body doesn't mean that you can't still provide that validation. And 
with practice and certainty, this is the point where you can have communication with the loved one that has passed on. They're standing in the spotlight. You're in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. Just ask them a question and be quiet enough to listen for the answer. Whatever comes to you first is the right answer. You can't do this wrong. And the more you practice, the better you get. You can ask, do you need anything? Why did you leave? Why now? Do you have any messages for me? Do you have any messages for anyone? You can ask them where they left things or what their passcode is for their iPhone. There's no time, no space in spirit. So the moment you have the thought saying hello to your beloved, it happens just like that. They hear you. They acknowledge you. And they're grateful right back. And then it is at this time, if they haven't already, that you have the opportunity to connect them to source, to hook them up to the Supreme Being so that their spirit isn't stuck here on the earth plane for any reason. So you can just imagine that that spirit just floats off to the edge of the universe, to the plane of pure love, pure light, so they can take their next step, whatever it is, to reincarnate, to hang out on the spiritual plane for a while. It just means that you are helping them not be stuck. They can conclude their business And you can talk to them anytime you like. Anytime you want to sit and be quiet and just listen. I still talk to my father frequently. He hasn't been in a body in eight or ten years. And yes, do I miss him in his physical form? Certainly. But I take advantage of him on the spirit plane. And I've asked him to let me know when he reincarnates. To give me a sign. And you can do that for your beloved. And know that any time you want to speak to communicate with, get some guidance from someone that has passed on. This is what you do. Just sit in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. Imagine that they're there on that theater stage. Because they can hear you. And then just listen for their answers. And in this moment, during this meditation, if you've become emotional, go with it. That's a beautiful thing. Grief is real. It's raw. Longing is real. Missing someone is real. And you can experience all of that while you're doing this work. And by doing this work, being in the center of your head, grounded in your bubble, spinning your chakras, saying hello to source, you are allowing yourself to process your emotions in the healthiest, most conscious way that I know of. 
you're allowing yourself to, to consciously process your emotions, to sit in your grief and yet still get a healing, still give your beloved a healing, still bring some light unto the world. So take another deep breath and congratulate yourself for sitting through probably the juiciest meditation I've brought to you on this podcast. And you've done amazingly well. You are light. You are love. You are perfect. And if you or someone you know is about to transpire or has recently transpired, I invite you to listen to this again and again. Practice your tools. Rejoice. Honor that person. Say hello. Or if it's you leaving your body, let your people know. Like, listen, body's not going to be around, but I can still be a spirit guide. And that's pretty far out. So in a moment, we're going to come back to the room. You're going to know that you can practice this this level of consciousness, this level of reverence for spirit and for those of us spirits having a human experience and having a reverence for the human experience, which comes with a life cycle. And it's a beautiful thing and we are all participating. Be joyous, be happy, be yourself. Take a deep breath, open your eyes, stretch, wake up, back to the room. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Cynthia Smith, and this is the Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast. If you or someone else you know is struggling with grief, their own, or if they've lost someone, please reach out. Hello at drcynthiasmith.com. Ask a question or to schedule a session with me. I'm here to help. Until we meet again, bye now. <laughs>